Hey guys, today's video is about the golden hour. We're going to talk about what it is and how to take full advantage of it. If you're a photographer or someone that takes great interest in photography, then you've most likely heard of the golden hour. Now, contrary to popular belief, the golden hour is not actually a specific time of day and generally isn't 60 minutes long. The term itself has a non-formal slang derivation and has a definition that is based upon the angle between the sun and the horizon. The golden hour refers to a time of day where there is a specific kind of natural lighting from the sun most commonly found during sunrise or sunset. More specifically, the warm sunlight that is found during golden hour usually occurs when the sun is between 6 degrees above and 4 degrees below the horizon. This golden light phenomenon happens when the sun rays hit the earth at a shallow angle. The rays have to travel a longer distance through the Earth's atmosphere before reaching a particular point on the surface of the Earth. As the rays travel, they come across large amounts of atmospheric particles like dust, water, and gases, which ultimately end up dimming the light. The atmosphere also causes the blue and violet wavelengths of light to disperse, letting in a lot more orange to red light to reach the Earth's surface. The result is sunlight that has an increased golden color temperature but also very subtle and soft on the eyes. Golden hour is unmistakable and results in sunlight that is warm, diffused and directional, delivering a very surreal and magical effect. Now from 0 degrees to 6 degrees below the horizon is the civil twilight zone. Here the Earth's upper atmosphere reflects sunlight, illuminating the lower atmosphere which results in reddish orange colors. And even though this is considered to be part of the golden hour, it tends to produce light that is very different from what you get from evening and morning light. The hour in golden hour is purely figurative and as mentioned before, don't expect the golden hour to actually last 60 minutes because even though it varies in time depending on your location, the time of year and the weather conditions, it is generally shorter than that. So why the fuss and why the name? Well, it all comes down to the light. Light is the most important photographic element and any good photographer will enlighten you on how magical golden hour can be for a photographer. The light just after sunrise and just before sunset is unlike any other light and simply cannot be replicated. Unless you're some sort of Photoshop professional with hours and hours of experience. And even then, it still wouldn't be as good as the real deal. Golden hour is suitable for a vast number of types of photography including portraits, landscapes and cityscapes. To take full advantage of this phenomenon, here are a few tips to help you get the most rewarding results. Number one, you want to plan ahead. As mentioned before, the golden hour is pretty short, so you want to do all your planning in advance. Figure out what time the sun is setting and what time the golden hour is going to occur using smartphone apps or the internet. You also want to familiarize yourself with the shooting location beforehand so you can figure out what it is you're going to shoot and where from you're going to shoot it. Another great practice is to use a tripod. The golden hour is usually not very generous with bright light, so you most likely need a pretty slow shutter speed to expose your shot correctly which introduces blur from a shaky hand if you're shooting handheld. It is therefore a good idea to use a tripod so you can lower that shutter speed as low as you need without losing too much sharpness in the final image. You also want to make sure you keep shooting. During golden hour, the light from the sun can change very rapidly with dramatic effects. You don't want a situation where you waited too long and ended up missing the opportune moment. You're far better off making slight camera tweaks on the fly than snapping continuously throughout all the lighting effects that the golden hour has to offer so you can filter through the shots later on for the best pictures. Make sure that your subject is facing the gracious golden hour sunlight. This usually yields the best results. However, there are times when that simply isn't the case. A final word of advice is besides planning ahead, you should also try to get to the shooting location a good amount of time before the golden hour actually occurs. This will allow you some time to prepare the camera setup and figure out whether the planned shots will work or not. You do not want to start trying to switch locations or find different shooting spots whilst you lose valuable golden hour minutes. So there you have it folks, that is the golden hour for those of you that didn't already know. It definitely feels like one of the more trivial photography lessons to take note of or learn about, but trust me, if and when you get it just right, you can get some breathtaking results. In fact, more often than not, the best photographs that are taken out there tend to exhibit some element of that reddish golden light that is so reminiscent of the golden hour. It's pretty magical. Thanks for watching. 
and I hope that this video has been useful to you. Please leave a like or a comment and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Catch you folks in the next one.